Good afternoon, uh, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Simon Grandage of the Business Link Insure Events team, and I'd like to welcome you to today's Innovation Showcase, where we will be discussing how Lincolnshire businesses have embraced digital technology to grow. This is the latest in a series of bite-sized webinars brought to you by the Business Lincolnshire Growth Hub to support businesses to get back on track after the easing of COVID-19 restrictions. The Growth Hub wants to help as many businesses across Greater Lincolnshire as we can. We're continuing to share the latest updates and advice as we receive it to make sure every business is aware of the potential funding, learning opportunities and tailored support that's on offer. We're also keen to share local business innovations or successes. So, if you have an inspiring story to tell, please do get in touch. For the latest news and guidance for businesses on this continuously evolving situation, please visit our website at www.businesslincolnshire.com. Should you wish to speak to an advisor, please email businesslincolnshire at lincolnshire.gov.uk or alternatively, you can call the COVID-19 advice line for support on 01522 782 189, selecting option number three. Thank you, Simon, and thank you very much, uh, everyone, for joining. Uh, that was uh, obviously a, a word from our sponsors, Business Lincolnshire. Um, uh, I uh, work for Business Lincolnshire as the specialist digital advisor and some of you uh, may know me. Uh, I've been around Lincolnshire for about 10 years, so uh, you will probably know of me. So we have um, four exciting discussions coming up and some great stories. This is about an innovation showcase and it's about companies, what they've done to, to improve their business using innovation. Uh, and very much, uh, Business support is, is what we do, and business support is how we have helped these businesses. So it's great to uh, have a discussion. Um, we're going to be showing some, some video, and we're going to be showing some uh, website links. Uh, so stay tuned. And like I say, uh, we hope this is a, a discussion rather than a, a, a monologue. So my first, my first uh, guest is Chris from Scape360. Um, and uh, Chris, thank you for joining us. Let, let's get straight into it. What, what difference uh, has technology made to your business? Mute, you're on mute. <laughs> sorry, first failing, sorry. Um, so predominantly, um, we're a technology business in, it, in, in its en entity. Um, we're a business to business um, service, essentially. Um, so we embrace new technology to, to help new businesses thrive through either increased exposure or, or sales and marketing. Um, but also we've seen a great increase in um, our business with obviously a drive for innovation through digital content. And um, not only have we seen a benefit from that, but also we can obviously relay that benefit to our clients. And uh, and certainly you you've got uh, you've got a, a video or a couple of videos to show us. Do you want to show that show us now? Because that will explain what your business does, really. So, um, are you happy for me to share my screen? Yes, we are. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay, so bear with me a second. I will just. Um, Share my screen. The wonders of technology. Isn't this great? While, while Chris is just setting that up, we, uh, I think we're going to see a video, certainly, is it Stanford College you've done? Yeah, so there's a, there's a variety of um, showcases I've got to um, present to you, which is um, obviously businesses in Lincolnshire, as well as um, the showcase of, well, Stanford College as well. Um, so the idea behind this is we, we create 3D um, content which allows businesses to showcase. Can everyone see my screen first? And yeah, my... yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's great. We have, um, just bear with me a second, I'm just going through the tabs that I've um, previously set up. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I've just got to bring the tab down. It's my, um, it's the Zoom. Yeah. So, 
what I wanted to present to you first and foremost was um, Linkshire Showground. So I believe we, we have the CEO, Jane. We, we have Jane here, yeah. She's keen to see this, yeah. This is obviously the, the, the famous Epic Centre where most of the Business Linkshire events and um, seminars and business expos take place. Um, this is a 3D model that we created and captured of um, the Epic Centre. Um, but not only is it a 3D tool for marketing purposes, it's also a great tool for use within um, the actual business itself. So, for example, the business awards are coming up um, and obviously COVID is still an issue. Um, and I just wanted to kind of explain uh, what you can do with the 3D model, not from a marketing perspective, but also from a... Uh, safety and also a mitigation um, perspective so for example here you'll see you'll see a floor plan and I've pre pre measured this is a full 3d model of the site and I've pre measured um, table areas so for example um, if I want to take a measurement of a table that would be at the business expo I, I can see that that table is is two meters in diameter so what does that mean well that means that in order to maintain social distancing, we need to have at least a meter from the other table, um, preferably two meters, but from the uh, showgrounds perspective, they can then see, well, how many tables can we get into the particular area? So from a, from a COVID approach, we can actually see that we need four meters, for example, two meters table, a meter either side. Um, and then what I've done is then I've, I've uh, put a, a small grid on the area so it shows you how many tables you'll be able to fit within that area um, to maintain social distancing for particular expos or um, award ceremonies so that's just one one use case that you can you can um, use the models for um, it also allows you to go in um, take a walk around and see the see the epic center in its entirety so this is a big big thing in America right now, for example, if, if bands or studios or expos, venues want to measure or pass on to their prospective clients who want to exhibit or want to present, they can, you can measure directly from this tool, um, which will allow them to, to accurately either quote or work out the logistics of how they can operate within a particular area. So that's one, one particular use case. But also from a marketing perspective, um, they, they can pass this link. You don't need any software to do this. You can do, everybody can do this right now from, you know, from their own um, home environments. And you can literally explore the Epic Center in, in full 3D, um, even place on some VR headsets if need be, um, to be able to navigate around and see the facilities that are on offer. Um, so, so, so Chris, does that mean that the software is embedded in that file? So that's why you don't need anything additional on your PC. Nothing, absolutely nothing additional on your PC. You can you can literally do this from a web link. Um, I'm doing it now from a web link. There is nothing there is nothing special about this web link other than that everybody can use it, whether it be on an iPhone, an iPad, okay. on your desktop PC. Um, so that is that is one great use case. Obviously, the Epic Center is the the epicenter of all, um, you know, the majority of business events within Lincolnshire. Um, so it's great that you can literally um, navigate and, 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 and view the facility from, you know, from the, from the home comforts of your PC. So, so your company actually will go out and scan and actually create this model and effectively sell this model back to the company for them to use, etc. That's yes, correct. Exactly. Spot um, on. So it's a multifaceted um, model. So, for example, yes, it can be used in marketing, but also it can be used in-house for health and safety. So, for example, you could be audited um, on this for your insurance purposes, for your health and safety, your fire evacuation plan in the event of an incident. This is, is, is a multifaceted model that creates so many benefits that initially the client doesn't realise how good it is. Um, but, for example to just kind of give you a bit of a perspective on this, that in America, um, insurance companies now are requesting a 3D model in order to provide you with an insurance policy because then they can see, you know, the before and after of any devastation or any event that might take. Right. Okay. 
that that that's absolutely super. Thank you. Uh, it is, um, we can use it on any website. So this is Active Nation in Lincolnshire, which is the the, the latest gym. Um, yeah. it on their website, no extra software, um, and you literally take a tour, and it will take you to the three D model of the gym facility. Um, so we we use this. This had forty eight thousand views in three months. Wow. Uh, and the idea behind this is that you can, you click on here, it will tell you we can embed media videos, but also um, it's still in progress at the moment, but you'll be able to book classes, enroll for gym memberships, cancel your memberships, all from a 3D model. Now, why is this important? Well, productions take time, they, they take um, employees away from you know, they have to, you know, they, they carry out tours themselves, but also people that don't have a normal nine to five working pattern, i.e. working nights, working long days, might not be able to get to that induction. So an induction can be created from an online model. Um, and literally you can go around and you can see the facility, facilities that are on offer directly from your iPhone, for example. So right. that, that's a great use case. Yeah, that's great. That, that looks fantastic quality as well, uh, Chris. Okay, so uh, in HD and it just uses your internet um, signal to be able to um, use this. So again, like I say, there is no special software behind this. It's all within the, the web link. Okay, that is fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Chris. Now, um, uh, a, a couple of years ago, you you enrolled on uh, a business support program that we were running, and uh, certainly uh, you and a number of your staff attended various uh, workshops. And I just I just wonder, uh, ha has that helped influence your your growth pattern since we started working together in what about 2017, I think. Yeah, so originally um, we, we enrolled on business and share programs as Aeroscape. Um, Aeroscape is still running, but it's a, it's a drone survey company. And we realized quite quickly after using um, business and share, which helped us with our social media, we, we attended um, day courses for LinkedIn, for Twitter, um, for Facebook, for Instagram. And what that did, that catapulted, or it gave us the, the sort of the rhythm to get ourselves online quite quickly with the expertise that we learned from Business Lincolnshire. And subsequently, we advertised faster than what we thought we would. Our platforms were ready sooner because obviously the, the understanding that we learned from um, the, the seminars. And from that, we then learned more about grants that are available, which then allowed us to buy more technology, which had then <laughs> allowed our business to, you know, sort of catapult even further and actually explore um, new methods of implementing this technology. So it's not just a marketing tool, it can be a health and safety tool. And for our recent project, which is Stamford College, um, the whole st students coming back into to, to school to, to learn has created a whole um, problem with obviously COVID. So again, they've used it to measure and mitigate um, and also provide their students with um, an immersive model. So a completely multifaceted um, product, but all stems from the initial foundations that we built with obviously Business Lincolnshire. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thanks very much for sharing that. If you can come off sharing your screen. Um, that, that was super. We'll, we'll come back to you a bit later. Um, uh, we, we saw a picture there uh, of uh, the Epic Centre at Lincolnshire Showground. So I'd, I'd like to move to Jane now. Uh, Jane's actually uh, the CEO of the Lincolnshire Agricultural Society, which is which is based at the Lincolnshire Showground. That's correct, isn't it, Jane? It is correct, yeah. And yeah. and building up to your famous annual Lincolnshire show, which happens in June, COVID happened in March, didn't it? And we were all locked down. And that gave you a bit of a problem, didn't it, Jane? So do you want to share with us what you did? <laughs> yeah, I thought if I just say that, because not everyone knows that we're the Agricultural Society, we're a charity. So we promote food and farming in the countryside. And one of our objectives is to hold a county show. So it would have been our 136th show this year. 
Um, and in March, with COVID-19, um, we decided to uh, cancel the Lincolnshire show because we weren't confident that it could go ahead. And obviously, from our point of view, as well as a charity, there's lots of costs involved in putting on the Lincolnshire show. And, and we felt it would be better to make the decision earlier rather than later. Um, so we made that decision, which was quite upsetting for the team. And most of the team were then furloughed, as lots of businesses have done, used the furlough scheme. Um, but then we thought, we want to keep the show alive, so why don't we look at doing an online show? Uh, and that's what we did. And that's what you did, and that, that was great. So um, if it's okay with you, what we'll do, we'll have a look at your website now. Uh, Marta's going to bring up your website because one of the key things you wanted to do with your website is, is make it as interactive as possible and to try and create the atmosphere that, that, that you, could, you, you would get if you were attending the show. So there's lots of videos on there. So if we just have a, have a look here uh, at the website and one of the key things in your website as we go down is you listed, you had an agenda of things that were happening which is just like you would you had a program of events and we did I, you did and actually what we'll do we'll just click on um uh, that the can you that cartwright introduction we'll just watch a little bit of this video because there were lots of videos th through all these events and it made it come alive so we'll just watch this one just for a few minutes And hopefully we'll have a Hello and welcome to the Lincolnshire Show Online. That's right, for the first time in 135 years, we've gone completely digital to bring you the sights, sounds and spectacles of the show that you all know and love straight into your living room. I'm Danielle Hall and you'll be hearing from me at various points throughout the day as we guide you through the masses of demonstrations, entertainment and videos that we have on offer for you to enjoy. And also we'll be giving you a taste behind the scenes as well because we'll be speaking to some of your favourite exhibitors about their experiences of the show as well. But without further ado, let's get stuck in to find out what's coming up in the first hour. Starting in the main ring, we'll begin with a blessing of the show from Alan Robson, the agricultural chaplain. Then our main ring commentator, John Stokes, will be getting you ready and raring to go for a taster of Broke FMX. And continuing with the action, we've got a look back at the RAF Falcons parachute team descending onto the showground. But that's not all. Over in the Lincolnshire kitchen, we're kicking off with a live pizza-making demonstration from Stephen Bennett and Scott Adam. Then it's time for Daisy Likes to Cook, where you can learn how to make homemade lemonade with the cross keys. And Jane Harrison from Red Hen Day Nursery will also be giving a tutorial on how to make poacher cheese scones. And Thank finally, you, in the countryside and heritage that. zone, we're starting... That's, that's great. I think that, uh, oh, that gives us a flavour okay. so, uh, of, of what we're doing. And from your point of view, Jane, um, I, I know lots of people that have talked about that and I thought it was a success. What about yourself? Did you feel it was a success? I did, yes. If I say that um, we actually pulled it all together within four weeks, because initially I was talking to other agricultural societies to see if we could do a joint one, because there's 20 showgrounds across the country that have agricultural shows and none of them have gone ahead this year. And we thought we would be stronger together to put on an online show that didn't work out. So it gave me less time to do it. But we wanted it to show what the show was about, not just for the people that attend, but also for people that have never been to the Lincolnshire show. And we also felt it was very important to the exhibitors that lot, they, they attend all the shows and that had all stopped. We gave them an opportunity, particularly local businesses, to showcase what they can do and what they have to offer. Mm. And, 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 and with how was the technology? Because this was a huge a huge undertaking and something that you'd never done before. How, how did you go about that? Well, I just sort of spoke <laughs> to a few people who helped us, which, we, which was Cartwright Communications, as you saw, that was to do with the PR, yeah. and City X who helped us with all the information and lots of local businesses. But also we spoke to TRS, which was a local company, said what we wanted to do, and they said they could actually design a platform and actually, we'd never worked with them before, but we thought, well, okay, then let's give it a go. 
Mm. And, um, and, it, and everyone was so committed, all, even all the businesses that supplied videos and footage across Lincolnshire, everyone wanted to help and support. And we couldn't have done it really without everybody helping us. That, that, that's great. So um, uh, uh, is it something that you would want to do again? Or do you want to get back to the physical show? Or will you do a mixture of both next year? We want to use the platform as an add-on to the Lincolnshire show so that it's a marketing tool so we would like the show to go ahead next year hopefully as big as it usually is um, but also it gives the exhibitors people to understand what's happening on show days but as soon as people actually sign up to, to be present at the show that we could have their details online with um, links to their businesses etc so that people can actually they get more out of the show that's what we're trying to do and I've also had a few inquiries from other agricultural shows who would like to use the platform next year as a similar to an add-on to their existing show. So, so actually what you see is the technology, uh, will, uh, using the technology in conjunction with the physical show uh, will yeah. make it even bigger and better. Uh, yes. uh, and it will deliver better benefits to the people that, that take sponsorship from yourself and the exhibitors, the stall holders and things like that. Yeah, and we're also um, we're using the platform because we normally do Lincolnshire Day because again we 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 I've got two education offices, and we work with the schools normally, and we normally have Lincolnshire Day at the showground. We're going to do that online this year, so that the the, the school children can work from the classroom and they'll see lots of um, things that you, they, about Lincolnshire and, and making things and different things, and it will also follow the curriculum. So we'll use the platform for other projects as well. Okay, that 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 sounds great, and. And uh, I know that uh, my colleague Guy uh, from Business Lincolnshire um, actually gave you a little bit of advice, uh, independent advice over what you should do as well. So uh, he did. Uh, it was great because it's a sounding board, isn't it? Because it's all new. And if you've got sometimes two people telling you it, it'll work this way, you believe it more than just one on their own. <laughs> OK, that, that's great. Thank you very much, Jane. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll come back to you a bit later, but it looked really exciting. I know I went on. Uh, uh, and, and looked at some of the stuff and, and I obviously have been to the Lincolnshire show uh, as well so that's great so thank you and we'll, we'll move on to Camilla now uh, Camilla uh, is from uh, Matthew Cox Limited uh, and they they do bespoke furniture don't you that's sweet. and if you look at their web website it's very very nice so uh, uh, what I thought I would do Camilla is we'll start with the video, if that's okay with you, because I think that gives a great explanation to everyone what your business does. So, so Marta, can we have the Matthew Cox video, please? A starring role for Camilla, here we go. <laughs> We're Matthew Cox and we're curators and makers of beautifully understated made-to-measure furniture. We inspire customers from LA to London to create one-off pieces of furniture. One of the major challenges that we face is trying to create a scalable business uh, with made-to-measure products. We basically make it as difficult as possible from a production perspective. We, we want to give the clients exactly what they want, but that means that we're not repeating models. Uh, everything is, like, is basically starting from scratch each time. You can change the, the length, the width, the dimensions, the scale completely. You can also have a range of different finishes uh, and levels of wear. So it really is it's a challenge every time we make a new piece. The productivity programme enabled us to access a 50% grant to pay for our augmented reality project, creating around 30 different models, uh, our pieces of furniture created in 3D. So customers can literally see our pieces in their own homes or in their offices or uh, interior designers can take it into their clients' houses you know, when the time comes through either Instagram or through our website, you'll be able to take your mobile phone and line up a table against a wall, uh, sort of change the dimensions of the table. You can even change the finish of the table. Each of the, the pieces comes in sort of five different finishes, between three and five. We have lighting, mirrors, tables, chairs that you can place in your, in your own space. I don't think we would have had the confidence to go ahead 
and brief this project had it not been for the grant. Particularly when the pandemic hit, we felt we needed to do something to, to be able to showcase our products, but to pay for the full amount would have just put it out of our reach. The 50% grant has enabled us to make that decision confidently. The process was, was really easy. Uh, we got huge amounts of support from the university. Karen was superb. And I think in the process of filling in the forms for the grant, we actually learnt quite a lot about our business and we now have got a lot of useful information at our fingertips as well. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marta. So I think the video, Camilla, gives a great explanation about what you do and actually how you've embraced technology. Uh, and, and one of the things you talked about was the productivity program. Now, some people may not know about that, but again, this is another funded business support program that runs out of the university. So do you want to just tell us a little bit about your journey and, and uh, how, how that came about? And obviously we've seen the results. Thank you. So um, first of all, I must credit uh, Commuter Films from Lincoln, who, who did a great job with that film. So I just wanted to do a little plug there first. But um, Plug accepted, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the journey was, I suppose it's, it started a, a little while ago because it, augmented reality was always something that, that we wanted to, to try, um, but it seemed like a, a really distant uh, possibility. Uh, when we heard about the productivity program, we thought this possibly could be the opportunity to, to do something. Um, and then when COVID hit, we felt that it was, it was the time to try and make that happen. We'd heard about the grant from, from Noreen Reed at, at Business Lincolnshire and supported by Karen Lockley at the university, mm -hmm. we were able to access the grant quickly and, and easily. We were given a lot of support in the process. So once we, once we had the go ahead on the grant and we had the funds in place, um, it was just a question of sort of organizing ourselves in terms of you know, what was going to be required uh, to, to bring this augmented reality to life because you might not realize it, but we didn't actually, nobody actually saw the pieces in the production of the augmented reality. It was all created from photographs, drawings and uh, finished uh, samples. So, um, and then uh, magically we ended up with um, sort of around 25 augmented reality models, which, uh, which you know, are now available or almost available to put on Instagram and um, on, on, our, on our website as well. So, I mean, the, 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 there must be a huge benefit uh, for you as uh, bespoke furniture makers and for your potential clients. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's huge. I think um, kind of starting from the sort of the, the production side of things, it's, it's extraordinary for us to be able to show people pieces that we haven't made in particular finishes. So people always buy what they see. So, so for us, you know, it gives us the opportunity to really explore different uh, finishes, different pieces uh and and it's it's fantastic and the the reception so far from our clients has been fantastic we had um we had a shoot with house and garden magazine and we we showed them the technology you know their, their minds were blown uh and i think as a as a talking point even it's fantastic because it enables us to be able to hold somebody's uh attention and talk about our pieces for longer and encourage them to interact and and play play with different possibilities and options you obviously to be able to rescale things in in your own room is uh and actually change <laughs> finishes is it, it, it's something that feels extremely futuristic but yet very accessible and real at the same time yeah i, I, I just just as you're talking there it's making me think of the emperor's new clothes you know because you're actually they're looking at a blank wall but but on a mobile phone, they see a table or they see something else. Uh, I mean, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, to think, uh, you know, almost like a traditional furniture maker is using this technology. I mean, that's, that, that's fantastic. 
It is. I mean, I, th I think, it, it, you know, funnily enough, despite Matthew's sort of antiques background, he's a third generation antique dealer. Um, <laughs> he's always been very focused on the future as well. I suppose in making pieces, he, he wants to create pieces that will last, you know, over time into the future. And, and, and I, so that sort of, there's an interesting, um, there's something quite interesting at play there, this sort of relationship between past and future. But he, you know, he's always embraced technology, even with his antiques business. He was one of the first antique dealers to go online. That was a result of 9-11, um, actually. So it is strange how these big events can sometimes force change. And I think mm. that's obviously what's happened again this time. Um, um, and, you know, and, I, and so I suppose, you know, something good has come out of the, the difficult few months that, uh, that we and others have had. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that, that's, that, that's, that's fantastic. And obviously engaging with Noreen and Co uh, Karen at the university, uh, uh, that I'm sure they helped you through uh, the, all the, the process and paperwork to, to get the grant sorted out. Absolutely. I mean, I'd say, uh, I mean, Noreen's always brilliant at sort of <laughs> Things. I don't know what, how she's not sick of me now, but um, Karen as well, you know, it was obviously a very tricky time and, and I was very keen to push things through quickly and, and uh, Karen really helped me to make that happen. Um, and, you know, there was, it was kind of like coaching really rather than, you know, rather than anything else. And as I said in the video, we ended up with some useful information that we were then able to use elsewhere. Uh, so yeah, it was it was a it was a, it, actually an enjoyable process rather than the sort of the drag that one would expect when when sort of trying to get a grant uh, funding. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, we 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 are quite enjoyable people at Business Lincolnshire. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, we're we're, we're here to help. Um, we haven't got a badge that says that. You know, but uh, but but we are. Uh, the interesting things you said you've got about twenty five. Uh, mm -hmm models or templates can you build that up now Are you, have you got the technology that you can make more and build those uh well i mean i think once we once we have you know ha having these 25 gives us a, a sort of a good template to to work from so we will be adding new pieces to the right. range I think it, you know we're probably more inclined to innovate in terms of our product range now because we have this uh right. sort of, ah, wow. place and and I think it's, um, you know, it's going to, I don't know whether you've seen augmented reality on, on Instagram before, but yeah. you know, for those of you who may not have experienced it, where you see the kind of the options to sort of have your grid or, or video at the top of um, mm. you know, your sort of feed, there's an, an augmented reality option. So just by virtue of that being there, um, it, I think it will just prompt some really interesting conversations. Uh, and you know, by people playing around with the the furniture, and I, I think they'll that they'll kind of come up with ideas, and we'll, we'll yeah, I think it will will certainly um, sort of create some dialogue that wouldn't we wouldn't have had otherwise. I think. Okay, that's absolutely super. Thank you for uh, Camilla for a, a explaining uh, what Matthew Cox did and and your your technology journey. That's really interesting. So. Uh, what what what's come out of our, our three guests so far is that they've engaged in working with Business Lincolnshire uh, to help them achieve change within their business. And there's a there's a broad range of uh, services that that we offer and support. And um, you know, uh, we we are here to help. So you know, having a phone call with one of the advisors or one of the specialist advisors like me just to say can you know, I want to do this, can, can you help? And, and the chances are we will try and find a way to help. So um, please don't feel scared or, you know, or, you know, or that, that we're here to take over your business. No, we're not. We're not going to tell you what to do. We're here to actually work with you and, and, and guide you through some of the, the issues or the problems and, and actually come up with solutions. So what, what I wanted to uh, finish with today is that uh, Business Lincolnshire um, actually uh, uh, funds three technology hubs um, uh, around Lincolnshire, one in Horncastle uh, uh, and two within the University of uh, uh, Lincolnshire. 
So uh, I'm pleased to um, introduce to you Anthony Gorman, who is from the MoCap technology hub which is based up it you've just moved up to rise home now haven't you anthony uh we haven't moved to rise home we've actually oh. opened a second dedicated ah. research facility so we actually right. have two sites that we work between now one down on the braveford campus and yeah. which i'm in right now right okay uh, and yes one up at the rise home campus as well okay all right that's that's super so what what i thought we'd do is um uh Anthony is just going to give us a, 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 a brief background about the technology hub, what they do and how they help businesses and the type of things they can do. Um, and please, uh, I, I'll, I'll let Anthony talk and then I'll, I'll finish up at the end. Thank you, Anthony. Well, I mean, please, you... please chip in as you, as you see fit, Stuart, don't. <laughs> do, do, you want, uh, do you want to go through your slides? So is that, um, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll start by, by overviewing who we are okay. And, okay. and what we do. And uh, as, as said already, we're a, a technology hub uh, and we provide a sort of adman, advanced motion analysis services. And we have a primary remit from the university and Business Lincolnshire to support um, enterprise activity. We here are a bunch of biomechanists and we're data experts. And our aim is to provide technology outreach, consultancy, and funded business support for any small and medium enterprise businesses in the greater Lincolnshire area. And we have here at our disposal loads and loads of technology for measuring movement analysis. And basically, we want to give any businesses or enterprises that would like access to that technology free reign to use it we can provide incredibly accurate analysis of mechanical movement. That could be humans, we've worked with animals, we've worked with equipment, we've worked with um, industrial processes and machine manufacturing, or to try and quantify how well things are performing. And to use that data, hopefully, to inform design and to innovate products. So overall, we're trying to in a sense, enhance movement patterns, um, inform equipment design, and help develop industry production methods. So that's pretty much an overview of so, so, so a typical who we are. example, Anthony, of that is something because you you uh, uh, you've worked with some sports people, haven't you? And you've 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 analysed their golf swing to to make sure they're they're standing correctly and things like that. Is that correct? Yes, we've worked, with, we've worked with golfers, we've worked with football players, rugby players. Um, really interestingly, we've worked with a lot of Paralympic athletes that are based in Lincolnshire. Um, again, to help them move in the most efficient way that they possibly can. And also to look at the equipment they're using and to try and inform the design of that equipment to best suit their needs for performance. So... We, so so if we think of, of it from a, an industrial point of view, like a commercial point of view, um, you, you use high speed cameras to, to record things, don't you? So Absolutely. Uh, that was a, a, a great point at which I could probably share a slide. There you go. <laughs> if I may. Um, one second, sorry. So we do have, uh, yes, um, if I click on share my screen and hopefully you can see here both of our um, research sites so I'm in the one at the left at the moment in the biomechanics laboratory and okay. our new one is up at, at Rise Home yeah. and we are actually now one of the largest uh, technology hubs in the East Midlands and as you said, yes, we do use high-speed cameras that look a little bit like this. And these have incredibly high sensitivity and record up to 18,000 frames per second. And we can look at machine processing methods. We can look at human movement. Again, we can look at interactions between um, equipment and the person who's using it to either make that more efficient or even to reduce the chances of injury whilst using it. Uh, another one of the pieces of kit that we use is our motion capture system. 
Now, people may have seen very similar kit used in the film industry or in games manufacturing, um, where these little silver markers are placed on key uh, landmarks of people or equipment. And these cameras work by measuring the position of these markers in 3D space. And we can then use that data again to innovate products or help change movement patterns. They work incredibly accurately. We're talking sub millimeter accuracy here. This is really precise quantified data. And it allows us to produce things like this that should be playing on the right hand side. Uh, so we can take this data, we can view how somebody's moving, we can see how they're interacting with products, we can see how well products are interacting with other products. Um, and we can measure velocities, accelerations, positions, material deformations, literally anything movement wise you can think of, we can measure. That data there is actually from a Paralympic rower and we then took that data and um, changed the design and 3D printed adaptations for the foot plate uh, that they were pushing on and then that helped them to go on and break the world record for the um, fastest time to solo row across the Atlantic. Wow. So I think that that sort of shows that the little changes that we can help make with this incredibly precise data can bring about some pretty big performance results. That's great. Then when I say performance, I don't just mean sports performance. Uh, mean efficiency, mean... production efficiency and things like that. Exactly that. Because exactly. one of the interesting things is, uh, I, think, I think one of the, the things that you've done in the past was, um, uh, to give you an example, was a, a bottling plant uh where uh, uh, it could be beer or it could be uh, fizzy drinks going into a bottle and the bottles are whizzing down the conveyor belt and every now and again a bottle flies off and smashes against the wall and actually by recording the production and slowing it down uh, uh, uh it was frankie uh, was able to identify there was an issue with the carousel it was on and one of the one of the hubs of the carousel was too high so that particular bottle was was being thrown thrown out and they were able to solve it just because they were able to slow it down so that's a, a really simple uh, solution for people so thank you is there anything else you want to to finish off with uh, anthony because you've worked with a, a variety of businesses so far haven't you yeah, we have. We've worked with um, national and international companies. We've worked with um, everybody from Formula One teams to elite athletes. Um, and then we've worked with also companies um, based in Lincolnshire. We're currently working with a trampoline manufacturer mm -hmm. to assess the, uh, the quality of the trampolines and their potential to, um, to cause injury and to reduce that for any mm -hmm. of the users. Uh, also to inform future design. We're working very closely with the Lincolnshire Police Force to help um, redesign their body armour and to mitigate the effects of the loads that they're carrying in their duties to improve wow. their health and well-being and ability to do their job. And we're working with uh, a company that are developing small wearable safety devices and fitness trackers. Okay. So we're using our data to validate what they're doing and to optimise the, the safety side of the calculations that they're making as well. Okay, that, that is great. Thank you very much, uh, Anthony, for, for giving it uh, as an update. So uh, to summarise um, for, for everyone, you know, we, we've, we've had three companies that have done some great things with technology. They've moved their business on using technology and and Business Lincolnshire have been involved in working with them to help that. And what we've heard from is Anthony, who uh, works at the MoCap Technology Hub and has this fantastic technology that is available to Lincolnshire-based SMEs. And the, with all this support, this support does not cost you any financial uh, investment. It may cost you some time investment but this support is provided uh, at no cost uh, to the the company because it's funded through uh, the greater Lincolnshire LEP uh, and through the, the the UK government so it is available for any business 
uh, to access and we're, we're here to help. So you can move your business on, particularly now, we're working with so many businesses as we've come into COVID, helping them identify what they can do next, how they can change their business model, how they can move forward, helping them uh, access funding, grants and some, some loans as well. So we are really here to help from a technology point of view, uh, we're able to work with you and guide you uh, because we're, we're here. We're not trying to sell you anything. We're advisors. We can give you that independence. I think Jane said it. It's good to have someone that you can sort of bounce ideas off and, and you can talk through and get an independent view of, of what you want to, to do and move through. And we can put you in contact with, with businesses who supply the technology if that's the way you want to go. Now we had a question come in. Let me just have a quick look. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you want to, Chris, Chris has just sent me a message. Uh, so Chris, yeah, do you want to, to mention that? Just following on from what Anthony has said about obviously his um, amazing uh, inventory of technology, we've just been awarded um, through the productivity program with help from Karen um, and I believe uh, Dr. Gill at the university um, and it's relation to modeling 3D, 3D areas, 3D spaces and the accumulation of smoke. So in the event of a fire, we, we're able to, or we're going to try through the productivity program to model smoke within the particular building. So that will wow. <laughs> then, uh, you know, create uh, mitigation plans or actually see how smoke and the fluidity of the smoke can, can um, either cause destruction or how you can mitigate against that. So one example is, you know, Notre Dame, the cathedral when, when, when mm. talking um, and the idea is through historic buildings, we can use our 3D technology to map the area and then create um, the, the passage of smoke through the building to then understand what or, you know, what might happen either to cause destruction or how you can mitigate against it by employing new technology. Wow, that, that's fantastic. This, this is going back to what Camilla was saying, this relationship between, uh, you know, past and future you know, if you're trying to protect historic houses. So that's great. Um, would any of the, the, the panel like to make any, any comment, any sort of closing comments, or uh, would anybody like to ask a question? Um, I see um, Jill is on, on the, hello, Jill. We, we've met a few times, how are you doing? I don't know if you want to ask a question or make a comment. No, she's great. That's okay. That, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, 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 any, any closing comment? Anthony, yeah, fire away. Sorry, I, ju I just wanted to say as well that, um, well, it, it's fantastic, this array of technology that, that everybody has been, been using in incredibly different ways. I think that's, uh, it's, it's quite impressive to see how everybody is using technology uh, differently. Um, the, the last thing that sort of we can offer that I didn't mention earlier is that we've, we've done a lot of projects with um, businesses who also wish to advertise. And just to say that the technology that we've got, we've also used in marketing and uh, literally in advertising uh, circumstances. So we're not just as a motion capture, but all about science and all about data, but we've got a, a broader sort of uh, aspect to ourselves that it can be our it can be design it can be as Christopher said working with with other academics as well and I found what what Camilla's doing with the uh, augmented reality stuff um, incredibly interesting so I, I wouldn't mind Camilla just if we could have a word about something after if that would be okay absolutely I've, I have questions too great <laughs> you're good so, so do you want do you want me to put you two in touch with each other, and you can have a, a private conversation? Would that be okay? If I could okay. grab your email, Camilla, that would be great. Yeah, we're, Marta will Marta will send you the, both the, each other's details. Okay, so perfect. That's great. Well, um, thank you. Uh, 
all, all I'd like to say is uh, thank, thank you very much. Um, you know, we've, we've heard from uh, uh, Anthony at the, the, the Motion Capture Technology Hub. There are a couple of other technology hubs. Uh, there's the Design Block, which also uh, is part of the university, and they do a lot of um, 3D printing and they can do some scanning and they can, they've helped a number of businesses, particularly on spare parts where there's a one-off spare part is required and it could be uh, uh, 3D printed out of plastic or it could be a prototype. So there's lots of things we can do to help uh, what you need to do. And uh, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for uh, listening and watching today. I hope you found it useful. If uh, you want, uh, if after you've gone off, you think, oh, there's something I, I wanted on that, if you just email into uh, Business Link, uh, uh, Business Linkinshire, uh, then uh, that's fine. I think I'm also listed, my email is listed on uh, the Business Linkinshire website. So if you want to send me an email, uh, that would be absolutely fine as well, and we'll follow up. But Thank you again all for uh, joining us today and thank you very much to uh, the, the, the three businesses and, and to Anthony for, for joining me uh, for this panel discussion. Thank you and goodbye. Keep well and safe. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you all. Just a final word from me. We're keen to hear your thoughts on today's webinar and we'll send you a survey um, on the presentation via email shortly. Um, appreciate it if you could take the time to complete that and give us your feedback, including any suggestions for future topics that you'd like to see delivered. Uh, keep an eye on the website for latest updates and to get your business back on track. Uh, and if you've not done so already, please subscribe to the weekly newsletter at businesslinkinshire.com. Uh, finally, there's a, an autumn series of digital interactive masterclasses starting next week with topics ranging from Google Analytics to 3D scanning. Uh, there's only limited places available on next week's sessions, which are Wednesday, Powerful PR, a two-part masterclass, um, and Thursday, the 10th of September, website planning for your business, uh, which is part of a three-part masterclass with subsequent sessions the following two Thursdays, the 17th and 24th. You can book these via the Business Linkage website, as well as view a list of further webinars in future, um, all of which are located on the events menu. On behalf of Business Lincolnshire, our presenters and panellists, and Stuart for chairing, thank you all for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marta. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Thanks.